Are you interested in learning CSS Grid, but haven't gotten around to it, or find it difficult to understand? Well, I have a free tool for you today called the CSS Grid Generator, and it's going to help you visually create your CSS Grid layouts. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you where to find it and how to use it, and we'll do it right after this. Welcome back to the channel, friends. My name is Dan Vega, and I've been a software developer for over 20 years now. I have over 90,000 students in my online courses, and I'm a curriculum developer for one of the best boot camps around. On this channel, you're going to learn how to code through a series of tips, tutorials, discussions, and even product reviews. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and learn something new today. As someone who's been developing web applications for a long time now, I'm kind of dating myself, but I started building websites using front page. I moved to Dreamweaver and I learned how to nest tables inside of tables. I learned how to float and clear fix everything. So you could say I've seen it all when it comes to front end development. Well, I don't consider myself a designer and you won't see any awards for my website sitting on my bookshelf over there. I do feel like I'm very capable in creating simple, clean, consistent layouts. That said, it's never been something that I've really enjoyed doing. I don't think I've ever truly understood how to create nice layouts and I've always felt like I was just kind of hacking away at something until I got to a point where I was kind of happy. Uh, it's been a huge pain in the butt for me over the years and maybe it has for you too. This is why when tools like CSS Grid and Flexbox came along, I got really excited about the possibilities of creating clean layouts. If you combine them with the advancements in JavaScript over the last few years, this is really what has got me excited again about front end development. While I have a pretty good understanding of CSS Grid at this point, I understand that can be a little bit confusing to get started with. That's why I'm really excited about this tool that I'm gonna share with you today, because it really helps you kind of get started with CSS Grid without having to learn everything at once. If you want, I also have a blog post associated with this video. You'll find a link for it in the description below or right there. Let's jump into the computer and actually build a layout using the CSS Grid Generator. So here we are, the CSS Grid Generator. If you want to get to it, you can go directly to the URL cssgrid-generator.nellify.com. You can do a quick Google search for it, or I'll have the link below. So when you first land on this page, you're giving a default layout. So you can see the number of columns, the number of rows, what the gap looks like, and then you get this very visual representation of what this grid is going to look like. At the end of the day, there'll be a place to export some code, which is what we're interested in. Uh, there's also a reset grid, so if you wanna go back to this default, you can. And also, as I mentioned, this is an open source tool, so if you click on this awesome little SVG icon here, it will take you over to GitHub and Sarah Drasner's repository for this tool. And I think that's one of the cool things, you know, just looking at projects like this, being able to jump into the source code and find out like how some of these things were done uh, is just as much useful as this tool itself. So we're gonna use this tool to build a real layout today and I'm gonna jump over and show you. This is the layout that we're building. Nothing very complicated, but I wanna start out basic here. Uh, if you're interested in maybe some more complicated layouts, uh, let me know in the comments below. So we wanna build this. So we have a header that spans all the way across. We had a sidebar, a content, our main content and then a right sidebar. And the important thing to note is this content will take up as much of the page as it can, and then we have the footer at the bottom. So what we're looking for here is we basically want four columns. So let's go back over here. So we have one and then two here in the middle and then one over here. So this header is basically taking up four columns. We are gonna have a little gap in between. Uh, we're gonna have gaps for the row and for the columns. So here's a row gap, here's a column gap. Um, so that's what we wanna do. And then we have three rows. So this should be pretty easy to do. We can come in here and we can say, all right, I want four columns, but I want three rows 
and I want 20 in between each. So that's starting to look pretty good, um, just based on that. Next, you're gonna to wanna to define the different areas of your application. Now that we kind of have this, we wanna define the header, we wanna define the sidebar, all these different areas. And just looking at this tool, you might not realize that you can do this, but you can actually drag and define some areas. So if we go ahead and start dragging here and drop it right here, you can see we have this area now. So that's kind of div one. Now we can just click here and that's div two. And then we can say div three, div four, and then this is our footer. So as you can see, we've kind of defined what our area is going to look like. But at this point, we still need, it doesn't look that right. We need to define um, some different um, constraints for maybe the different rows or different columns. So if you look at the default, everything is one FR. Now in CSS Grid, an FR is a fractional unit. So it says, hey, given the available space, go ahead and take up one fractional unit of that. So in this case, when all of these are fractional units, it will divide evenly across the grid. So what we wanna do is actually define a different type of height for our header. Let's say that our requirements were that our header was gonna be 100 pixels. So now we can define that height there. Then what we can do is we wanna say that, hey, maybe our footer was only 50 pixels. And now you can see we start to have this header, this footer, and then the second row, which is a fractional unit, is going to take up the rest of our available space. So at this point, I think everything looks really good. We want to go ahead and take this and uh, create an actual layout with this. So what can we do? So I'm gonna click on this, please may I have some code, and you're given some code that you can then copy. So if you wanted to copy this to the clipboard, you can. And what it's doing is it's creating a parent and then inside the parent, it's using all of those divs that we created. So like this div is actually a header, this is a left sidebar main, right, footer, et cetera. You could always rename those later, but it just gives you some generic code to start with. Now, if you're not quite sure what the HTML would look like, you can go ahead and show the HTML as well. So I really like this feature because this is something that was added later on, um, but right now you can go ahead and copy the CSS or the HTML. So what I'm gonna do is pop over to a code pen and we'll go ahead and add this to it. All right, so here I am in CodePen. If you're not familiar with CodePen, it's just a tool that allows us to quickly generate uh, some front-end code using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And not only that, but I can go ahead and share this out with you later. So if you want, go ahead and look for a link in the description below. So with this, we're going to pop over to our CSS grid generator, and I'm going to copy the CSS and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that in there. Now I need to do one thing. If you notice, this, these divs are inside this parent. Um, so the, what this is actually creating is SCSS. So what we need to do is change our preprocessor. And we're just gonna say SCSS, um, oops, save and close. And that should be good. So now you can see that in parentheses. So then we'll pop back over here and we'll say, show me the HTML. We're gonna copy that, and we're gonna pop this into the HTML. Now, we can't actually see anything, and the reason for that is there's like there's no like borders on any of the rows or columns, but what I'm gonna do is um, we're just gonna say, hey, for everything that's not apparent, let's go ahead and throw a background color on it and some padding. So the way that we can do that is we can say, all right, anything that's not parent, Let's go ahead and add some padding of 10 pixels and let's do a background color of, I have like a nice gray here, so and that should give us what we're looking for. Okay, so now you see we have our header and our footer which have defined heights of 150 pixels. Now the middle though is not taking up the rest of the available space. I want it to like push that out, right? Uh, we could even, uh, you can see there's a little bit of a border and a margin or a margin here. If we wanted to, we can go ahead and say body, 
margin zero, padding zero, just to kind of reset that. Um, but what I want to do is I want to push this middle row all the way out. And now the way that I can do that is by, by defining how large the parent is. Because remember, we said the second row of our CSS grid was one fractional unit. And right now, it's only taking up as much as it is because we haven't really defined a height on the parent. So you could come in here and say something like height equals, I don't know, 500 pixels, and it's going to push it out even further. But what we want it to do is we want to actually take it up take up the entire viewport height, which will take up 100% there now. And so however we resize this, this is now taking up that one fractional unit. This is 100 pixels, this is 50 pixels. The middle row is everything that's left. So as you can see, it was pretty easy to have an idea of what type of layout we wanted to create, use the CSS grid generator to create that layout, and then bring it over here into CodePen and actually create the layout. Now this would be nothing different if you were doing this locally and wanted to pop open Visual Studio Code, uh, create an index.html, move that HTML over and use the CSS. So, what I really like too is the code that it creates is pretty self-explanatory. So if we look at the parent, the parent is the wrapper. So in CSS Grid, we always have ty uh, some type of parent, whether it's in an, an entire container or maybe in one section you wanted to use Grid. Um, that There's always a parent. So that parent is where we set the display grid. And then you can see there's the columns, the rows, the grid gap, and the grid row gap. And those are all the properties that we set over here. So we set our columns, we set our rows, and then all these different heights and rows and columns translates into this. So we have this grid template columns. Now you could have said 1FR, 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 but there's also this nice repeat function. So again, CSS Grid Generator is not only kind of teaching us how to build our layouts, but giving us these nice um, things that we might not have known about without it. So repeat is really cool. It just allows you to repeat. So it's saying repeat four times one fractional unit. Now, if you were using different units for all of those, you wouldn't use a repeat. But in this case, we are, so it works out well. Then we have rows, and we know the header is 100 pixels. The middle row is one fractional unit, and then the bottom footer is 50 pixels. And then in between each row and each um, column, we have 20 pixel gap. So that sets up the actual grid, and then all of the children, so we have div one, two, three, four, five, each, child, each child kind of defines in the grid what they're going to take up. So what this is saying is it's one, one, two, five. So what does that do? So if we look at the div one, this is the start of the column and the grid and where it's going to go to. So the difference with like, um, you have to think of grids using grid lines and it's easier if you pop open into something like uh, Firefox developer tools and you can actually see the lines or in Chrome developer tools where you can actually see the lines whereas this would be like zero this would be like one um, so again they're all just start and end values and you can start to learn a little bit more about these um, but this gives you a nice um, uh, starting point if you will so now if you were going to use this in an actual layout, I would probably name this something a little bit better. So I would come in here and say, hey, this is the header. Um, and that's what our header is. All right. So now you have some div elements, some class names that make a little bit more sense, right? So. So I hope that was helpful. Again, I found the CSS Grid Generator Tool by Sarah Drasner very helpful. Uh, if you get a chance, take a look at it and try and create your own grid, uh, create your own grid layouts. And again, if you have any ideas for grid grid layouts that you'd like to see, uh, go ahead and throw them in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the CSS Grid Generator. 
So question of the day, what are some of your favorite resources when learning CSS Grid? Please let me know below and we'll share those out with everyone. Finally, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And if you don't want to miss another tutorial by me, go ahead and click on that bell notification. That's it for today. But as always, friends, happy coding.